Okay. Show me. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dutch C channel for part five in our Gap RC AX4 light quadcopter build series. So, um, if this is the first video in uh, this series you are watching, this will be a 180 size with 4 inch propellers quadcopter, and I'm trying to keep it light and nimble. And in the previous video, we added motors and propellers to our setup. It already has a 4 in 1 ESC uh, built into the frame over here. And uh, in this video, we'll be adding a flight controller and a receiver to this setup. I can assure you the quadcopter will fly a lot better with a flight controller and a receiver in it. So um, I think it makes sense to, to add one. And let me show you what that flight controller looks like. So this is what I'll be adding in this video, a receiver. And uh, yes, uh, it is a fast re receiver for uh, Futaba systems. And so far this is the smallest and lightest uh, fast receiver I've come across. Now obviously if you run uh, a different system, FR Sky or anything else, uh, this is not uh, interesting to you. But uh, if you are, if you uh, do use fast systems, this is a reliable receiver. I've uh, used quite a few of them and they haven't failed me since. And again, nice and light. On to the flight controller itself then. Um, both these items are obviously uh, mentioned in the description down below. I've got a, an entire list of all the components for this build in the description down below over there. And this is an F4 board and I selected that one because I haven't tried one before. I wanted to see uh, if it flies well and if it uh, can sustain a uh, 8K uh, gyro and pit loop. And I can already tell you it can very easily. Uh, with uh, I don't even get to 10% uh, processor utilization. So in this video I'll uh, show you uh, how to install this flight controller. I'll obviously be uh, connecting a receiver to it, all the ESCs and I'll add a buzzer to the system and a LED strip. And yes the board, oh I'll also uh, be uh, connecting the VBED. So the direct battery connection uh, to this flight controller, so the flight controller has insight in the voltage uh, of the flight LiPo. Um, I'll tell you how that's done. And uh, yes, the board can do other things, like uh, talk to your uh, OSD with an RX and TX uh, pin pair. Um, I won't be using that. I have a uh, Swift 2 camera for this setup, uh, which has its own uh, OSD. Let's see. Yeah, so uh, let's go over all those connections we will be using. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, first of all, the firmware. As you can see in the description down below, I got this uh, flight controller, the Flip 32F4 from Banggood. And mine came with RaceFlight firmware pre-installed. And there's nothing really wrong with that. Uh, I just uh, wanted uh, a beta flight on mine. So I uh, went ahead and installed beta flight 3.1.7, the latest as this, this point, onto it. Uh, pretty uh, easy. Uh, there's a bootloader button over here. Um, it's not like the momentary switches you uh, often see on other flight controllers. You just uh, depress that copper shielding a little with your nail and uh, power it up and then you're in bootloader mode. Okay, second thing, uh, the outputs. Over here, this is the, the front of the board by the way. So here's a USB connector which will be on the right side of this board. And again, here are your outputs to your uh, ESCs. Uh, but this uh, reel starts actually with your receiver input. This three pin pair over here, the top one, is your PPM or SBUS receiver in. And uh, all the other pin pairs over here are your ESC outputs. 
uh, the top one over here is uh, one, two, three, etc. Okay, and there's a little bit of a weird thing uh, with uh, PPM or SBUS. Um, this will be very hard to see in this video, but there are two resistors over here, two over here, and you have to uh, desolder or remove the top one, the R19 that is, this one, the top one, uh, so to the left of the board, if you want to use SBUS, so again, the, the first one, the left one, you have to remove for SBUS, the second one you have to remove for PPM. Now this is a bit unusual. I haven't come across boards uh, in which you had to desolder things uh, to make use of uh, SBUS or PPM. But um, it is what it is. That's what the documentation uh, I found online uh, says. And that's what I did. So I removed the first one and I'll use my receiver, I'll solder my receiver onto the first pin pair. Oh, the board does come with uh, pin headers by the way, but I won't be using those. Uh, of course, if you do want uh, to solder those pin pairs onto the board, feel free to do so. Pretty easy. And let's see, yeah, if, in case you are not familiar with that, uh, this entire strip of holes are all interconnected and are your grounds and the middle ones are also all interconnected and those are your 5 volts that's your 5 volt reel or part of your 5 volt reel and the third uh, array of uh, holes over here are your in and outputs your signal wires so this is where your ESC signal wires will connect to and the first one will be the signal wire from your receiver. Okay, so I'll uh, go and uh, solder those up in a minute. And there are two other things I want to connect up. Like I mentioned before, I want to connect up a LED strip and a buzzer. Now, my LED strip actually comes with uh, two leads. And yeah. I'm not uh, completely sure. Um, uh, here are your auxiliaries. This is your auxiliary. Oops, sorry. Auxiliary uh, array over here. And the first three pin pair are for your LEDs. The, the second three pins should be for your um, buzzer. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I have a two pin buzzer. I am not completely sure how this is going to work out. Maybe I need another buzzer. And the same thing goes for my LED strip. Uh, my LED strip has two wires on it. So yeah, we'll see how that works out. I'll uh, go and solder things up. And um, yeah, um, the LED strip isn't that important, of course, to me at least. Uh, the buzzer, however, kind of is. So I hope I can get that to work. So. Um, let me uh, solder up a few things and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got everything soldered up that I need to uh, connect. And I'm happy to say that uh, everything works, even the buzzer. But the uh, LED strip uh, did not and that's probably due to uh, uh, I didn't uh, run the board off of the battery power. I ran the board from the USB power. So uh, we'll just see. Um, I'm not at the stage uh, that I uh, can connect a LiPo, so uh, we'll just see what happens. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll light up once I connect the battery or the LiPo. So what you also notice is that I uh, didn't solder anything to the top of the board. This is uh, the top of the board, this is still the front. I've soldered everything to the bottom of the board, as you can see here for a slightly cleaner look and that works out better for me as well because my uh, PDB is sitting below this board obviously which is uh, the case in most uh, builds so uh, the wires can be shorter. Now uh, over here you see a multi connector and that's because my uh, multi ESC PDB has this connector to connect every signal wire and the 
uh, ground and uh, positive to it. So that's neat. And this wire over here, this black and white uh, one with the servo connector, will be my V-bed uh, wire. I'll, I'll uh, shorten that up and uh, solder it to the battery leads. So uh, let's see what more can I tell you. Ah yes, um, SBUS. I've used SBUS and um, let me show you how I've set my ports up. I've set them up like this. Pretty simple. I just uh, engaged uh, Serial RX to uh, UART1 as you can see here. And that worked uh, straight away so that's nice. And let's move to the configuration tab of the Betaflight. I've obviously selected Serial RX and SBUS and again that worked out great. Now um, there's one more option you can use uh, for this board for your receiver as mentioned. Over here you've got a PPM or SBUS connector pair over here. You also have this flexi port over here though, a, a UART kind of a connector. And you can use that one for Spectrum satellite receivers. Now I don't have such a receiver so I can't test that. But again this port you will use if you want to use Spectrum systems. And let's see, oh yeah, uh, let's uh, move back to the configuration tab of Betaflight. As you can see here, I've set my gyro and pit loops to 8K. Um, somehow the board uh, has not um, accepted more than 8K so far. Maybe I have to do some research into, into that. But for now 8K is enough for me. And if we move all the way down, you can see in the status bar down below, uh, that I'm only using 4% of the processor uh, capacity, or in other words I have 4% processor utilization, <laughs> which is super low of course. So there is definitely room for a higher, a faster gyro and pit loop, but uh, again I think 8K will uh, suffice for now. Um, I could have uh, easily uh, gone and uh, used more peripherals, as you can see only 4% uh, processor utilization. So that's very nice and um, obviously I'll now uh, hook the board into uh, my frame and that leaves me at uh, only having to add the FPV gear. We'll do that in the next video, that will be a pretty short video, not very exciting but uh, I'll show you how to connect those things up. And then we're ready to go and do a test flight, so that should be coming up pretty soon. Hold on for that. For now I want to thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions about this specific board or uh, how to uh, install other boards, hit me up a comment down below in the comment section of this video. And I'll catch you on the next video. Bye bye.